let's talk about this Texas winter storm. I know many of you are wondering, Dana, what the heck? What's happened here with this Texas power outage? Well, in this video, I'm going to share my experience as well as, you know, some record breaking numbers and what you can expect if you are moving to Texas. What we just experienced here in Texas is like the coldest record breaking three day, four, maybe five day stretch in history of cold weather for Texas. And if you saw my Texas weather video, obviously that was bef recorded before this happened, uh, we have this expectation that maybe once a year, usually in February, we may get a nice storm. And we know in Texas, everyone makes fun of us from in the Northern states, but <laughs> we know in Texas, if it ices, stay off the roads. It's very dangerous because number one, we don't have the equipment. Number two, we don't have the tires and cars to drive on the ice. And number three, it's ice for Pete's sake. It's not just snow. So we know in Texas that everything shuts down if it ices. So if you caught a glimpse of that Fort Worth accident, it was horrendous, guys, super horrendous. People were on the expressway driving as if it had not iced and catastrophe, right? And oh my gosh, our heart goes out to those families. Um, so, but what I want to talk about is what to expect if moving to Texas. Should you be afraid to move to Texas now? Because this was pretty crazy. So let me first get started with my personal experience. Uh, if some of you were scheduled for my Texas Tuesday call, and guess what? I had to cancel it because in my home, um, we did experience Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday the electricity, we had the rolling blackouts. And so it would come on for an hour or so, and then it'd go off for 15 minutes to up to an hour, uh, just off and on, right? Now, I bought a new home in May, so it wasn't that extreme for me because when you buy a new home, you get um, the, the codes now are where they seal all of the air, air pockets. Um, in your walls and the plugs, anywhere that there's air leakage, they're going to seal it. It's by code now. So when our electricity went out, our home held in the heat much better than some of these older homes. And so I did have some friends that said that in their home, they, they didn't have electricity for like a, she said their longest stretch was 12 hours and it got down to 54 degrees, which is cold guys. And they were so sweet because they were like, we didn't turn the TV out and we wanted to make sure that uh, to use as less power as possible because they were trying to conserve energy. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> we were conserving energy too, but we were definitely watching Netflix uh, when the power was on. So don't hate me. Uh, so, uh, so that was her experience. There were some people without power completely. We had the rolling blackouts and it wasn't as terrible for us again because we have a new home. We also have gas fireplace and a gas stove. So what that meant is we could still cook because we have a gas stove when the power was out. And we found in our gas fireplace that you can put some D batteries in there and you can ignite it. So we turned on the gas fireplace. We took the glass off of the fireplace and it heated much better. So our personal experience was not fun, but it wasn't deadly, okay? And I know that some people, there were extreme cases. So what I did experience is our neighborhood came together. They were active on the Facebook page. We didn't have water. We were one of those families that didn't have water for three days. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we didn't have water. And it was Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that we had the rolling blackouts as well. Thursday, we just had like three blackouts and they got shorter and shorter. And then the rest of the time we've had electricity. For the water, we were out of water from Tuesday until Thursday evening. And so we had three days pretty much without water. So what we did is our neighbors, uh, they got a, some extra bottled water and they shared with their neighbors. I thought that was so cool. We shared D batteries with our neighbors because we found the little trick so we could have, you know, heat. And then, um, what else? 
Oh, so what we did for our toilets, you probably have heard, is we were taking snow and we would, uh, you know, melt it down on the cooktop and then we would use it to flush our toilets. But other than that, we had enough water, thanks to our neighbors, and we lived and survived in family bonding time for sure, neighborhood bonding time for sure, um, and that was our experience. And so was it the end of the world? No. Was it for some people? Sure. Um, so that was just my experience. Now let's talk though about what happened in Texas. So I was just Googling it like many of you and our local channel eight uh, news station says this, historic cold in DFW, a look at the record breaking past few days. Kyle Roberts says this, historic. This cold air outbreak that we just experienced could end up being once in a generation or even lifetime cold. So let's take a look at the records that the DFW area has broken so far. The coldest three day stretch on record. Never has there been a colder three days in a row recorded in DFW. So the other coldest three day stretches were way back in 1983. Um, and then the coldest before that was 1899. So when we're talking about record breaking, we're not talking about, I'm not afraid that this is going to happen every single year. I mean, after all, I think we're in global warming, right? I think that what the expectation for Texas is that ERCOT, who is the, you know, the power grid for Texas, they were forewarned that we were gonna have a storm and guess what, they were not prepared. And I was listening to Governor Abbott, who I love, by the way, I really like our governor here in Texas. Uh, he was, he said that they were given the choice whether to winterize their equipment or not. And many places chose not to winterize, which is why we had power outages, okay? And are they going to change them in the future? I'm certain they will be changing those rules here in the future because they don't want this to ever happen again. Um, but in the past, they were given the choice whether to winterize their equipment or not. And because we don't experience this very often, we may dip below freezing, but it doesn't usually last so many days in a row and so cold so many days in a row. And so they had not winterized their equipment. Will they probably? I bet they will probably pass something now to winterize it so we don't experience this again. So what did we see as a community here in Texas? One thing I saw is that the neighbors were helping each other, that um, our friends, we would call each other on the phone and ask if they needed anything. Our churches came together and said, hey, what do you need? And delivered food, delivered water. They were inviting each other over. So we had a neighborhood that was like one neighborhood over and they got water before we did. And they were like, hey, do you want to come over and take a shower? Take advantage of our shower. So it was really cool to see how the neighbors bonded, how the friends, they reached out to each other. We didn't drive, our family didn't drive for three days straight because we know better than to drive on ice. Um, now I know that first responders did, um, but after that first major terrible accident, there weren't near as many accidents since then. And, um, it was just very interesting to see and very good to see the community coming together. Now, one thing we did not experience here in Texas with the power outages is looters and vandalism. I'm so grateful for that. Instead, the community came together instead of fighting one another. That was pretty cool. There were warming stations that people could go to in several parts of the Metroplex. There were um, hotels, now they were pretty much full hotels were. Do I think that this is going to happen again? I hope not. I'm not the expert, um, but I think that if this happens again, it will be another rare occasion. I don't expect that this is gonna happen every single year. In fact, I have lived here almost my entire life since I was four years old, as many of you know, and I've never ever experienced this before. We have never had rolling blackouts in my lifetime, um, since being here, in my uh, my husband's grandmother says she's 85 years old. She says 
I have never experienced this in my entire life. And so do, do I think this is gonna happen again? Yep, probably in another 50, 100 years. It probably happens once a generation and not even to this extreme. Like there's never been pa rolling power outages like there was in this occasion. By the way, we didn't have any uh, busted pipes in our house, thank the Lord. Uh, one of our real estate offices did have some damage. They had not some, like they did have a leak in our offices. And um, so plumbers are banking right now, <laughs> to say the least. There's all these memes going out about that right now. But yes, um, it's what we have insurance for, but I'm grateful that we didn't have any busted leaks. Now we were definitely proactive, being my family originally was from Minnesota. We were very proactive in making sure that all the pipes were, um, or the pipes were open, right? Like you leave your faucets dripping and things like that. And so we were just very fortunate as a family here. So contact us if you want to know more about the Texas winter storm or the Texas power outage. Our agents are here to help answer your questions. If you're thinking about moving here, fill out the Dream Home questionnaire and you can set up either a one-on-one -on -one with one of my agents or you can join my Texas Tuesday. And I'm sure this Tuesday um, we will have plenty of conversations about it. All right, thanks so much for watching, let me know what questions you have in the comments below. And refrain from being ugly, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a great day.